how did the Palestinians become refugees in 1948? Up until roughly the mid-1980s, the standard explanation was that the Arab, radio, the Arab states broadcast radio messages telling the Palestinians to flee their homes while the Arab armies invaded and that after the Arab armies succeeded in crushing the nascent Jewish state, the Palestinians can return. That was the standard interpretation, the Arab radio broadcasts interpretation. Most of you have probably heard one or another version of it. It's also true to say that already by the early 1960s, it was known that that claim was flat out false. How was it known? Well, it happened that during the 1948 war, that region was very heavily monitored by intelligence agencies. And they kept tapes, records, of the radio broadcasts during that period. A couple of researchers, one by the name of Walid Khalidi, a second an Irishman named Erskine Childers, they went back in the early 1960s and they checked the records of the uh, recordings <coughs> of the radio broadcasts and they found no evidence of a broadcast telling the Palestinians to leave. Even though it was already known in the 60s that the claim was false, it had next to no impact on the historiographical and scholarly literature. Come the late 1980s, a number of Israeli historians began to in particular, Israeli historians began to research the topic, having access to Israeli archival sources hitherto untapped. And they discover it's correct. There were no Arab radio broadcasts, and that the Palestinians left forcibly in 1948. Now, it is true that a certain amount of controversy remains about whether or not they were systematically and premeditatedly expelled in 1948, or whether they were the hapless victims of war, wartime refugees. So the main Israeli historian, a fellow by the name of Benny Morris, his famous claim was that the Palestinian refugee question was born of war, not by design. So there is an issue that remains about whether or not it was premeditated. But with a couple of marginal exceptions, all scholars now agree that what happened in 1948 was an ethnic cleansing, a term that they all use, including Benny Morris, that it was an ethnic cleansing that happened in 1948 to the Palestinians. As I said, there are still areas of disagreement, but the overarching conclusion, or I should, but there is nonetheless an overarching consensus. On the crucial question, the consensus is that Palestinians suffered an ethnic cleansing in 1948. Let's look at those refugees. You can agree that the Palestinians were ethnically cleansed in 1948. However, you can disagree on the moral and political judgment you render on that fact. So you take the chief Israeli historian on the subject of the Palestinian refugees, Benny Morris, he acknowledges it was an ethnic cleansing. But he says, I think sometimes ethnic cleansings are good things, not bad things. That's not a factual disagreement. That's a moral judgment. He says that I think the annihilation, I'm using his word, the annihilation of the Native, uh, Native Americans in North America was a good thing, because it made possible the creation of a great American republic. And he says in the same way, it was a good thing 
that the Palestinians were expelled in 1948. Otherwise, he says, I think with factual accuracy, you couldn't have created a Jewish state because however you sliced up Palestine, there would always be an Arab majority in 48. The only way to create a Jewish state was to expel the indigenous population. And he thinks, all things being said, a Jewish state was a good thing to happen. He in fact says the main error that the Zionist leadership committed in 1948 was that they didn't expel all the Arabs from Palestine. They should have expelled those Arabs who eventually became Israeli citizens. He says they should have expelled the Arabs from the West Bank and they should have expelled the Arabs from the Gaza. Had they expelled all the Arabs in 1948, we wouldn't have the problems we have today. 